What's up, you guys? Welcome to Integration B for Intermediates Part 13. In this section, we will be learning semi-integration by parts. Now, what on earth is that? A semi-integration by parts? Doing integration by parts halfway? Or what, what, is that, what does that mean? Let me show you. This first integral is the best integral to demonstrate this concept. So, this looks non-elementary, right? If we split the integral, if we split the integral in two terms, then what we have is non-elementary integral terms, right? If you try integrating this by itself, it, it's, it, it's not going to happen. If you try integrating this by itself, it's not going to happen. They're, they're both non-elementary. However, Sometimes, two non-elementaries together becomes elementary. And the sneaky mechanism to why that works is because of integration by parts. There is a hidden cancellation, and we're going to find that cancellation. So, how do we do it? Well, we, we first take... We split it in two terms again. And you get to decide, instead of doing integration by parts to this whole integral, you do integration by parts to a portion of it, or half of it most of the time. So here, I'm just going to do integration by parts on this, on this section, and you will see why. You will see why I do this. I'm going to derive this. Integrate 1, then the derivative of this is 2x e to the x squared, then integrate this, I get x. Okay, so I end up with x times e to the x squared, but I'm left off with this leftover integral. Well, notice that this is e to the x squared times 2x. We integrated this, right? So I get plus x e to the x squared minus the integral of 2x squared e to the x squared because that's that's what this is right that's what this is oh and look this and this are the same thing but with an, with the subtraction they cancel out i'm sorry this this is supposed to be x squared but they both cancel out and you're left off with this. And that's not an integral, that's your answer. So your answer is x e to the x squared plus c. So technically, this integral is a reverse product rule. But that's a very difficult reverse product rule to see, because that does not look like reverse product rule. So when reverse product rule looks ugly, or it doesn't look like a reverse product rule, and it looks like non-elementary functions, one way is to do semi-integration by parts. Here, we have a very common integral that shows up a lot in integration bees. But for most people, even though we know that we've been told so many times that this is a reverse product rule, it's still hard to see how on earth this is a reverse product rule. So another way is to use semi-integration by parts. So uh, I don't know if I want to do this, derive this one. So I'm going to derive this portion instead because it's just, it looks easier to, do, to derive. So here I'll integrate by parts with this term only instead of the rest. So we're semi integrating by parts. So here, this is x ln of x, 1 x, oh, would you look at that? This integral here is equal to negative integral of 1 over ln of x, which cancels out with this, right? So they both, they both cancels out. And so we're left with this. And so our answer is x ln ln of x plus c. And that's our answer. Oh god. Okay. Don't freak out. 
don't freak out, this looks like an MIT style integral. It's just an integral from Spivak's calculus textbook. But this looks awkward. Let's try, huh, let's try simplifying everything first, right? So that we get a, a good sense of what's going on. So we see we have x cosine of x and then minus, uh, this looks like secant x tangent x. Okay, uh, this does not add up at all. This looks nasty. Okay, so we see that this is x e to the sine of x cosine x and then e to the sine of x secant x tangent x. Okay, what now? Well, let's integrate by parts. Not together, but partially. Right, and the reason I see is because I see this could be a, a very easy integral, and I see this, and I see this. All right, let's try it. X e to the sine of x cosine of x. This becomes negative one. This becomes e to the sine of x. Okay, but this, okay, wait a minute. This is negative e to the sine of x. This looks nothing like this. We're screwed. Calm down. We can do this side as well, right? Let's try it. Let's try this side. E to the sine of x. Let's bring in that negative so that just just so that it's a lot easier for us to see. So we have negative e to the sine of x, secant x tangent x. Then this is secant x, and this is e to the sine of x cosine of x. And that negative gets taken by the the altering rule. And notice that here and here, they're the same integral. It's just this one's minus and this one's positive, e to the sine of x, right? The cosine and the secant, they cancel each other out. Would you look at that? So our answer is this and this. So your answer is e to the sine of x. We have x minus secant of x plus c and that is your answer so sometimes you might have to do uh, semi integration by parts twice or in two different terms and then have a leftover non-elementary integrals cancel each other out okay Alrighty, we have another MIT style integral. Well, this integral is from Gmain. And the first thing I see is secant square. And I instantly think, okay, maybe uh, I could possibly do integration by parts. So let's see where that goes. Okay, so again, just only this portion this term only. We're not integrating by parts of the whole thing, just, just this term here. Okay, semi-integration by parts. So we have sine of negative seven, and we have secant square. Then we have, well, positive because of the integration by parts rule sine of x negative 8 and then secant square here uh, the integral of this is just tangent x okay so now we have an integral of this so this becomes the integral of 7 we have tangent of x which is sine of x cosine of x, right? Sine of x, cosine of x, and we have sine of x here, that's like 8. This cancels out, this becomes 7. Ooh, 
this looks similar to this. Oh, I messed up. No wonder I'm missing because of chain rule. I forgot to do chain rule. Cosine of x. Now, that cosine of x cancels out. So be very careful with chain rule. So, okay, now this looks exactly like this. This is a positive version of this. Cool. So that cancels out. All I have to do is just this answer. So my answer, so this is my answer. This seems to be an easy type. We go ahead, let's see, this looks weird. Hmm, this looks non-elementary, right? If, we, if I separate this, e tan x secant x, and this, this, this all looks non-elementary. So, maybe we could do some semi-integration by parts. I'm going to choose this term, and the reason is because sine of x is just easier to integrate. So, I'm going to go ahead, e to the tan x, don't forget to take, take the negative, and then we get e tan x secant squared. This is cosine of x, and so now we get minus e tangent square secant x as our integral, and that's what we have here. And we have the negative version of this. Oh, they cancel out. And so we're left with this, and that's our answer. So it's cosine x e to the tan x plus c. Awesome. Whoa. Okay. So this is from MIT Integration B. What do we do here? Is this a product rule? Well, it's a, that's a nasty looking product rule. Uh, but let's try semi-integration by parts to sort of ease the pain that we're looking at. So here, this looks not elementary. So let's drive this, integrate this, and we get, let's see, negative 2x1 plus x squared, and we have e to the x. Uh, that looks nothing like what we have here, but okay, let's just, let's try integrating by parts on this term. Inverse tangent of x, uh, minus 2, 1 plus x, e to the x, if you if you integrate a lot, the derivative of this is e to the x one plus x. The derivative of this. So that's what this is. So integrating it is gives us this. And here we have negative uh, one plus x squared. And as you can see they're both the same thing just opposite signs right this one's positive this one's negative they cancel out to each other so this here and this here is our answer all right so we have e to the x ln of 1 plus x squared and then we have minus 2x e to the x inverse tangent plus c and that is our answer ooh this one looks awkward each term looks non-elementary so which one do we do I will choose the term that's the easiest which I find here you will think ln of x is easier but think of it like this if you try ln of x sine of x and you get 1 over x here uh, negative cosine of x. This looks nothing to what this is. Right? Let's try integrating by parts with this one. I'm going to do cosine of x. I'm sorry. Uh, into uh, Derive x ln of x. And integrate cosine of x. Then this is sine of x. The derivative of this is 1 plus ln of x. Again, does not look like this, right? But, 
scratch this. Notice that here we have ln of sine of x here. Oh, <gasps> look at that. So ln of x, sine of x, and it's negative, so they cancel out. They cancel out. So we, so what we have is x ln of x, sine of x, but don't forget we have this one here. So we have the integral of sine of x dx. And so our answer is x ln of x sine of x plus cosine of x plus c. And that's what we have. Here I see cosine squared minus sine x. If I split it, they look they look non-elementary for each term. So semi-integration by parts is, is what I'm thinking about. I feel like this term would be easier to do by parts with, so I'll do that. I'll take the negative, and then this will be cosine x. Here, this would be e sine x cosine x minus. So this becomes cosine square, which is this is, but this one's negative, so this and this cancels out. So we're just left with e sine of x, cosine of x. Okay, very, very simple. So this looks wild. What do we do here? Ooh, to sort of see this a lot better, let's kind of change this a little bit. Let's see, we'll do cos x. 1 plus cosine of x, and then the cinch here, you can actually, uh, there's a different way to sort of put this as. So this is actually equal to tangent of x over 2. Now let me show you why. So here, sine of x, we're going to treat this we're going to treat this as sine 2x, and we're going to treat this cosine as cosine 2x, right? It's a little hard to see, but that's how we're going to treat it. So, that's going to be 2 sine of x over 2, and cosine x over 2. And then here, it's going to be 1 plus then 2 cosine square of x over 2 minus 1. This cancels out. 2 cancels out, and 1 of the cosine x over 2 cancels out, and we are left with tangent x over 2. So that's how this equals tangent x over 2. And that's what we're going to use for this one. Okay. So now it's a little easier. Now we have an easier term to semi-integrate by parts. Right? Because if it was a fraction, then it's it's just, uh, it's disgusting. And I don't want to use LNs, right? Like, let's say, like, oh, this, this portion right here is easy to integrate. But then you'll get, like, LN of, or, like, negative LN of 1 plus cosine of X. And then what do you, what do you do with that? So, a little annoying to deal with. So, turning it into tangents is a lot easier. So let's do that. So we have tangent x over 2, cinch x, secant square x over 2, over 2, and this is just cosh. Okay. So does this help? Well, let's take a look at secant square. I'm just going to draw this in a different color. So we have secant square, uh, well, negative secant square. Uh, this is the same thing as cosine square of x over 2. And if you remember, cosine square is equal to a half plus half of cosine of 2x. And that's what this is. But because we have 2 cosine squared, these half becomes 1 plus cosine 2x. 
So what we have here is 1 plus cosine of x, which is what we have here, right? With cosine of x, oh, look at that. This and this here with this, they cancel out. So this term, our answer is just tangent of x over 2 cosh. This integral does not look like reverse product rule. Well, it, it does look like reverse product rule, but if you sort of see the terms, if we sort of see the terms like this, this is 1 over x squared, and then plus 6 over x4. This is definitely not reverse product rule. We are, we are definitely missing something. So what could this be? We don't know, so we'll go ahead and do semi-integration semi by parts. Because this term here and then this term with cosine x, they look non-elementary. So we'll go ahead and do semi-integration by parts. So cosine of x, I'm sorry, I'm going to derive this and then integrate this. And the reason I want to do that is because we have this term, we have this term. So what if this becomes like 1 over or something over x cubed and then I can make this one, I can make this one become something over x cubed and maybe they might cancel out. So let's just try it. So here we have, well that becomes positive of 2 over x cubed sine of x. Here we have, this becomes positive sine of x. And then this one is negative 2 over x cubed, if you do the power rule. And would you look at that? This and this cancels out. So our answer is this and this. So now we go ahead and write our answer. This is just sine of x over x squared minus 2 cosine of x over x cubed plus c. And there you have it. That was our last integral for this section, so that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, it's actually quite satisfying if you do a lot of semi-integration by parts. It, it really is satisfying. And it's, it's a lot easier rather than just doing a bunch of integration by parts as a whole. You could just do a portion of it, and then the rest would cancel out with the other. So I hope that this video is very helpful. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next part.